exactly. So it looks um, quite naff there. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> welcome to the, the second event that I've uh, spent time with Robert on today. Um, we had the Joomla Australia user group meeting a few hours ago, um, which was uh, hopefully going to be the, the timing of the launch. Um, I've got uh, um, various people on the production team pinging me at the moment with various updates to say when things are ready to look at. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's uh, an exciting day and, and one of those times that uh, we've really got to get um, uh, enthusiastic about Joomla again. <clears throat> so, to introduce myself, I'm uh, Patrick Jackson. I'm with Joomla Australia uh, and currently I'm the Joomla Volunteer Engagement Team Leader for Joomla. Um, so many of you may have in the past, um, particularly if you were interested in the GSOC or the Summer of Open Source programs, um, which you'll hear about more later today on, uh, you might have been in a session that we ran earlier this year with information on how to get involved in the Joomla project. Um, and we'll be running more of those types of programs into next year. Um, Shivam will probably cover more of that soon. So, uh, so I've been using Joomla since uh, 2000 and no, what was it, 16, 2005 when Joomla first started. Um, and uh, my day job now is uh, that I host about 100 websites, including um, 70 Joomla websites that I maintain and about another. 20 that I regularly maintain that are WordPress sites. And I honestly prefer Joomla so much more. Um, most of the, the headache sites that I have tend to fall into the WordPress category. Um, but uh, the, the way that Joomla clicked with me 15, 16 years ago was fantastic. And that's sort of the model that I've stuck with that made sense and it worked really well. And Joomla 4 has now gone on to continue that tradition. Um, we actually had one of the Australian users today. He um, uh, felt like reminiscing. So he went back and, and he actually managed to install a copy of Joomla 1.0 to see if it would still work. He had to downgrade several settings on his server, but he, but he eventually got it working and, and said that you know, it's, it's very interesting to see how much of the core from 16 years ago has continued to stay around in Joomla and move into uh, Joomla 4 now. So, so if you haven't had a look at Joomla 4 yet, um, the best place to start is the landing page that uh, has been put together, joomla.org slash four. And on that page, you'll find lots of information about all of the parts of Joomla 4 and things that you can use it for. So I'm gonna run through a few of those uh, to start off with, and then um, later in today, this will be fully live and, and have links to, to the system. So one of the things I particularly want to, to point out here is um, even earlier tonight, we actually, um, during the Joomla Australia uh, presentation, we were able to upload the language packs for English Australia and English US at 100% translation. And uh, as part of that, I've become a proofreader for those two languages and learned how to upload them to the Joomla translation and language pack system. So um, what I'd encourage all of you to do if you're looking to get involved with Joomla is uh, take a look at this week's um, Joomla community magazine, uh, which came out today to coincide with the release and Joomla's birthday. So it's a little bit earlier than normal. And there's an article on Joomla's Lion Heart in there. And Lion is L10N in that regard, which is short for localization. So we need a lot of help to get Joomla translated so that we can get up from the 24 language packs that are ready today for Joomla 4 up to having all 80 that uh, were previously available for Joomla 3 at 100% translation and, and ready to go. Uh, so I know that I've been speaking to a couple of uh, GSOC students and, and some of open source students that, that have been interested in getting involved in the, in the project. 
uh, and they've been starting to do some work on the, the Hindi language packs. Um, but there's, uh, I think all up, there's eight language packs for India in amongst that 80 worldwide. And so if you are um, interested in finding out more about that, the article this month covers all of the information on how to get started just doing the translations. And then we'll be following that up with more information on becoming a proofreader later on. So, so I've been testing Joomla and documenting Joomla, uh, translating Joomla for the last 15 months while Australia has been in and out of lockdown. Um, like every other part of the world at some stage. Um, unfortunately for me, we're back in lockdown in Melbourne, Australia, where I am. Uh, so that puts me back in front of the computer for a few more weeks to get on top of some other Joomla related issues. So if you haven't opened up Joomla 4 yet, one of the selling points is that it's nice and fast to install. Um, Brian will probably run through a couple of these as well in the next session. Um, the the questions that it asks you in the installation process got consolidated down a little bit so that's a, a bit simpler um, and then the flexibility stays there from Joomla 3 to Joomla 4 in the amount of extensions that are available out of the gates today don't be surprised if you're considering jumping or upgrading from Joomla 3 to Joomla 4 that you can't do that from day one so Effectively, the first stable version is really another release candidate that's actually then not going to change a lot over the future, but there'll be still some bugs. But a bigger issue is that there's not every extension yet has been, uh, there's a lot that haven't been upgraded from three to be Joomla 4 compatible yet. And the other main thing you'll find is that a lot of templates aren't um, redeveloped yet in the new template format for Joomla 4. So um, my advice, which is another article this month in Joomla magazine, is to take your time and plan your migration, be patient and wait for all of the things that you need to be put in place so that then when they are all in place, your migration should be very smooth. Uh, one of the main things that's been developed for Joomla 3 going to Joomla 4 is the pre-update checks and the migration program. So rather than the way it was with Joomla 2.5 to 3, where there was a lot of uh, feedback that it wasn't as smooth sailing, at the moment, if you've got all of your extensions and your template planned out properly, the test migrations that I've done on simpler sites have been working very well and transform your site into Joomla 4 quite easily. As you get more complexity, there's more work to be done in the planning phases and then you need to, to get on top of that. So, Obviously one of the strengths of Joomla is that it is open source, which means that not only can you uh, invest in developing sites in Joomla at a lower cost because the the core of the software is available for free. Um, it also means that things can be fixed faster as well as things can be contributed to the project to improve the project by anybody that's involved and interested. And I'm excited to stay around after my presentation to, to join on when uh, Shivam's introducing the Summer of Code projects. Uh, I'm a mentor for one of them, uh, or a background mentor for one of them, and I've been watching a few of the projects as they developed over the last couple of months. Um, most of those will be integrated into Joomla 4.1, and some of them are very exciting as to the next level of functionality they will bring. And that's going to continue into the Joomla lifecycle. The other great thing I love about Joomla is the fact that you, know, you can, if you want to fix something, you're not stuck like you are with uh, a software as a service type platform where it's hosted and you can't change anything. Um, today, I was able to log in to one of my websites and make two template overrides, one for the administration area and one for the front end of the site. And both of those then changed the entire base functionality of that component uh, to do what I wanted to do. 
um, which I probably couldn't do as easily with any other system. So one of the reasons I love Joomla. Joomla 4 has a number of SEO improvements and that's not just in regards to, to search engine metadata. Um, it's also in regards to, to optimizing the performance of the website. Out of the box, Joomla 4 will score close to 100 on Google Lighthouse um, as a, a blank build. And if you build your content correctly and, and go forward correctly, you will end up with a Joomla 4 uh, website scoring higher with Google Lighthouse out of the box than I've seen any other piece of web software do um, without installing any additional plugins. Once you get to a point where you've got your site populated, then obviously yeah, there's going to be caching and optimization things that you can turn on that will then increase the power of, of the or the optimization of the, the site. Um, connecting it to CDNs and things like that uh, should mean that anywhere in the world you should be able to score a high Lighthouse score without needing to do too much to the website um, out, of, out of the gates. Security has been always a factor with uh, making sure Joomla works, making sure any website works. Um, I've always found that Joomla has been far more secure than other systems, whether that's because it's attackless or whether because it's actually stronger security. I'm, I'm, I think it's a mix of both. Um, but with Joomla 4, uh, several other new security features have been added in. Um, the main one that uh, most people will come across is content security policies. Um, there's a couple of articles in Joomla magazine that uh, cover what, what's happened with that and how that's configured. Um, and there's a new uh, component that manages all of that. So you can actually now tell um, in the Joomla control panel, you can now go through and say what um, parts of the site are able to give you permission to, to authorize certain types of content and activity to happen without too much of a, an issue. So um, that's quite a detailed uh, thing to set up. Uh, well, the out of the box works very well, but to actually refine it to, to fine tune it um, takes a bit of effort and, and a bit of information. Um, and I know that we're looking at um, running more sessions on that uh, set up through user groups around the world over the coming months. Multilingual content, Joomla's uh, famous, well, I don't know, it's famous for it, but one of the biggest features of, of Joomla is the fact that it's got a multilingual content system built into it as a core feature. So not only can you go and install multiple language packs into Joomla out of, um, as soon as you install Joomla, um, you can also then have multiple uh, languages on the one site and then have the ability to switch through different sites. Uh, and the Joomla 4 landing page is actually built in Joomla 4. And you can see there that it's got a, a switch there that will switch things into to other languages. Uh, and all of these pieces of content have been translated into different languages um, as part of the process. So the English Australian and English US language packs only got added earlier tonight. So um, that's the first time I've actually clicked on the, the US one. So um, actually, you now I'll go back to my Italian is not good. So um, we would be thrilled to be able to add other language packs in for, um, uh, for Hindi and, and other Indian dialects. Um, it's just a case of, of having people to go and, and put the information in and get it all up to speed. So um, if you're interested in doing that, I'll give you my details at the end of the, the chat and uh, we'll go from there. So, um, to? so then growing system. So between Joomla being open source and extension developers building their Joomla extensions for Joomla 4, and templates coming out for Joomla 4. Uh, the overall ecosystem for Joomla is looking fantastic as we go into Joomla 4. 
um, there's several new plugin categories and several new components in Joomla 4, like workflow, which will mean that you can actually have uh, layers of um, functionality added in that do particular things. So with the workflow plugins, as an example, um, workflow will let you have stages where you can transition articles from one to another stage and it'll then trigger whether they things like whether they get published or featured uh, whether they go backwards or forwards for editorial purposes to different users and trigger notifications um, but some of the plugins that could be developed for that would might be that once you've finally got to the point of pub publishing your article uh, a plugin can then be set up to use the Joomla Web Services API that's also being introduced to then send um, the details of that new article across to your social media and automatically publish it for you as part of the workflow. Uh, so there's plenty of features now that will give automation and things like that. Uh, Alexander, who's talking, I think, last in today's session, um, I believe is covering web services API uh, for Joomla. Um, and what that effectively is going to do is, is create a, a a range of things that you can do with Joomla um, that might control Internet of Things devices. Um, you can hook them into Zapier, if this then that, or Integromat to make automated processes. Um, and you can have it so that you, you might have other um, websites that you manage that you want to use the content from that website on your Joomla 4 website. And so you can set up a web, web services API hook to have that information transfer from one screen to another. So. so if you take a look through more on the Joomla 4 landing page, um, all of the different Joomla 4 hashtags that are being used will have their individual sections and they'll take you through to documentation on the different features. Uh, one of the other ones, the Joomla 4 now has um, taken what was com search, the original Joomla search, out as a core component. So you need to reinstall that. Um, and then the com finder, which is the smart search in Joomla, um, has been dramatically improved. And so you'll be able to um, find out more about that one. The new email uh, template functionality in Joomla means that rather than just having a set of basic template, um, or sorry, basic text-based emails. Um, you could now go in and set up all of your system emails so that they were formatted with logos and HTML and gave a more professional uh, appearance there. I mentioned workflows a little earlier, um, where that's now going to be a, a major game changer for uh, use of sites on enterprise level um, solutions because what you'll be able to do amongst the things I said earlier, uh, you can now set up individual user groups for parts of the, the workflow chain. And so it might be that you know, anybody in your organization can um, write an article. And then when they contribute that article to a particular category, it'll be sent to the category editors. The category editors can then say it's ready to be published. It goes to the content management team. They finish off what they need to do. And then the, the publications manager can then set it so that it's then scheduled for publication and all the other things that need to be done. Uh, I touched on Joomla for Speed, where the Joomla um, uh, is really performing well on Google Lighthouse. Um, a lot of the speed improvements are under the hood. So you need to sort of dive in deeper to find out what they are. One of the big ones was a, a concerted effort to move all of the code that is um, what's classed as, as render blocking JavaScript, move that so that it, it forcibly loads it uh, in a lazy load fashion later in the, the loading of the page. Um, and the, that created a significant speed improvement. Um, there's been a big concentration on accessibility, which I'm hoping Brian's going to touch on more. He's had a lot to do with uh, drilling down into all of that. And then I mentioned security earlier. And then of course, uh, translate. So what I might do is give you a quick uh, 
tour of, of translating. So if you want to help translate Drummer 4, you can just go to the landing page and then click on the button at the bottom there. And that'll open up the Joomla crowd in for the CMS. And that's jumped straight to the core language files. Um, when you come back out of level, Joomla has five main projects. You've got the core language files, official extensions, the Joomla websites. So this is where the Joomla 4 landing page is included in this one. Um, the overall Joomla website template and then other marketing resources for Joomla. Um, but I'll quickly show you here. Um, you can see the different percentages that all of the language packs are. So if you're watching and you happen to be from one of the language areas that are shown, um, all you need to do to get started translating is create a, an account on uh, Joomla's Crowdin and then you can click through and get started. So um, let's go down to, so you can see here that Hindi is currently 14% approved, 25% translated. Um, and that probably means that uh, there's a need for some proofreaders. So I'll come back to that later. You then would click on translate. And then that'll load all of the strings that need to be translated. And then effectively you just type in what you need to. You can copy the string down. So in this particular example, you would only need to translate user, completed, and request, and for. All of the rest of those fields are uh, parameters that get passed in from the program. So you then would click save, and then it would go and uh, start translating. So, um, so if I go, So you can see here that the various strings are already been translated there and, and they will be ready to go. Um, and that's all you need to do, click save and then move on to the next string. And uh, many, many potentially hours later, um, I know that even English Australia and English US is effectively copying and pasting every string from British English, making very subtle changes along the way um, it's almost like I was proofreading English GB, um, but uh, that still took hours. There's, uh, I think, if I go back here, there are close to, I'm here when I hover. Uh, one more. So 67,355 words that make up the core Joomla language pack. And those 67,355 words need to be translated 88 times to get to the point where we have all of the language packs done. So I uh, encourage anybody watching to, to jump on to Crowdin. And um, if, if we ended up with 100 people for each language, then you've only got to translate 1% and so it's 670 words and you, you would be, um, we would be at 100% very, very quickly. Um, if you have more questions on that uh, and or any questions on getting involved in Joomla at all, uh, the best way to get in touch with me and the volunteer engagement team is to email contact hyphen vet at community.joomla.org and that will come straight through to us and we can answer your questions, introduce you to other teams to get involved with in the, the Joomla sphere and, uh, and hopefully um, get lots more contributors back into the project. So, uh, so I'm, Patrick, if I may interrupt, there is one question that has come that is related. Uh, I've just put it on the chat. Yeah. Uh, so it is from Moshtapa Tahiri. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, yes. so he's saying, please talk about RTL languages. Uh, why is there no demo for it? Uh, could you just uh, give some clarity on that? Yep. Uh, so I've, here's a, a website. This is my first live Joomla 4 website. Um, uh, 
So technically, in production, I probably shouldn't play with it during the demo. Um, during development, there was, uh, for a while, the only languages that were available was English GB, which was uh, the default language, French, which had been set up so that it was a second language, and then Persian was set up as a test for the RTL languages. So there is a demo for RTL, but it's Persian. Um, all of the other language packs need to be finished in order to get to the point where they're, they're done. So, um, so what I'll do here is I'll log back in and I'll just go to languages and Arabic Unitag is, I believe, the RTL. And so now if I go to system and languages, we can now make that the default. And this will be very interesting. Uh, actually, no, I'll do it on the back end because then. And so now you can see there that the entire site has been flipped around and is right to left. I won't go into that too much. My Farsi is not spectacular. Um, and I will get lost very quickly because I'm still working out where we need to go there. Uh, I worked that out. So um, so I'm not familiar with which other languages are right to left. One of the disadvantages of, of being a, a, in Australia is that we're a very uh, monocultural uh, language base. Um, so you sitting for the Joomla certification exam a couple of years ago, um, pretty much everyone that sat the exam needed to go away and cram the night before on all of the stuff to do with multilingual because none of us had actually built a multilingual site before. Um, so you know, I, I invite anybody watching to um, jump on crowd in finish the translation of the language packs that are right to left that you need for your uh, region. We'll get those in so that they can be installed and then people can install those directly into the site. Um, and then I also invite someone that is uh, very interested in um, RTL to write some Joomla articles uh, for the magazine to say what we can do there. So. All right. uh, so if there's other questions, yeah, Path can just drop them into the chat, which I'll see while we're, we're going. Yes, I will drop them into the chat. So no more questions yet. Uh, so you can go on. I'll uh, just interrupt you in case there are any. Yep. Right. Um, so there's an article, I keep on referring back to Joomla magazine. We've done a lot of work in the last uh, 15 months to put lots of articles out that, that cover uh, a large uh, number of features of Joomla 4. So it's really worth going back and looking through those previous issues. Um, again, if you're interested in translating Joomla articles, sorry, Joomla magazine articles into other languages, um, we would love that and it would reach more people. Um, the dashboard has changed considerably if you've used Joomla in the past. Um, and there's an article on that uh, in this month's article. Um, do the, I'm going to go back uh, only because it's a live site. Uh, languages install as packages. So when you search for a language, you'll see the parts of the language files. Um, but to actually uninstall them, you need to uninstall the package and that will remove the, the language pack for that uh, language. Um, so I guess, yeah, I'm happy to open up to questions for a few minutes, um, even from the other presenters that, uh, that are here to 
to talk about um, uh, different things. Um, I see Brian's uh, waiting to follow me. I thought I was following Brian, which generally makes it easier for me, but uh, <laughs> um, considering he introduced me as uh, uh, basically someone the size of Hagrid from Harry Potter, uh, the last time I saw Brian online. <laughs> um uh it's um yeah it's always good to to catch up with general luminaries around um around the world from time to time um and interestingly that's uh happened more often for us in um in lockdowns and in the last 12 months than uh, from australia that we've been able to get to the other side of the world to get involved so um yeah it's been um, an interesting year so um cool all right well i think um if there's no more questions uh if you do have more that you want to find out about getting involved in joomla email contact dash vet at community.joomla.org and um i look forward to uh, hearing more from people that uh want to get involved in in translations uh and then we'll move on to documentation another time uh, later in the year, we'll be putting out more information about this year's Pizza Bugs and Fun event, um, which we're starting to plan at the moment. So um, that will probably have a, a big concentration on documentation and translation to get those up to speed now that Drummer 4 is stable. Thanks for your time. <laughs>